Hey everyone, in this video of PWA series, we're going to take a look at the Cache API and service workers. I'm going to tell you what is a service worker, how do you write it, and how do you register. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the Cache API as it's a prerequisite to working with service workers. And the Cache API is a modern web API that was added to all major browsers and it lets you simply cache request and response pairs. So if you do a request to a certain document on the internet and you get a response, you can cache this entire request and response. Let's take a look at a short screencast to see how we can cache a request and a response in the browser. To get started with the cache API, you have to decide on a cache name. I'm gonna go with test-cache and then we run caches.open on that cache and this is gonna return a promise. So then we have to resolve this promise, which gives us the cache object that we can then call some methods on. So now on that cache object, I'm gonna call the add method with the URL of this API that we wanna cache. And you see, as soon as I hit enter, it does a fetch request to get this URL. And then all of these headers, all of this response will be cached. Let's head over to the application tab, cache storage. And sometimes you might need to refresh, but I already have it here. And then in test cache, you see there's an entry for slash user slash one, and we have all of the headers and we have all the response. And what's nice about it is that if you go offline, you still have this cache entry. So we're gonna use service worker logic later on to be able to serve this from the cache. Now that we know how the cache API works, we're gonna work with service workers. And the service worker is also a modern web API that was added in the web platform and what a service worker is, is simply a proxy that sits in between your web page and the network. And this is extremely powerful because now we can control the network. We can control incoming and outgoing network requests, which means if something fail, we can decide to serve another document. We can serve something from the cache. And for example, if it takes too long to fetch something from the internet, we can decide to abort it and then fall back to the cache. Having a service worker gives us greater control when developing our web application as we have more control on what's going on on the network. The service worker code that you're going to write is going to be in a separate file and this file you're going to have to register it from the index.html. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Now if you go back to the same project we had in a previous video and I go to the index.html, this is where we want to register our service worker. So first I'm going to start by creating a new file, which is going to be the service worker, and I'm going to call it sw.js. We're going to write the code in a second, but first let's start by registering it in index.html. So we'll open a new script tag, and then we want to use the navigator.serviceworker.register method, and then we pass in the path of the file, which is sw.js. But before using navigator.serviceworker, we want to check that there is support for it in the browser that you're running in. So we wrap that method in if service worker in navigator, which is kind of a check to make sure that we have browser support for it. And the register method on the service worker returns a promise. So we also have to resolve it. And then we get a registration. We're not going to do anything with the registration in these videos, but I'm just going to console log it. And if there's an error, then we take the error message and we pass it to console.error. Now let's go in sw.js and start writing our service worker. We're gonna start by listening for the install event and this is gonna fire when the service worker gets installed. And when it gets installed, I'm gonna open a new cache which is I'm gonna call precache-v1 and then I'm gonna take the cache object and run the add all method. The add all is similar to the add except that it's gonna add multiple URLs and it's gonna fail if one of them fails. And then I'm gonna add slash which is the homepage and app.js, which is our JavaScript file. And we have to make sure that the service worker does not get killed while it's waiting for the response of these two entries to put them in the cache. So this is why we wrap it in event.waitUntil. And now if I reload the page, you see we have a successful service worker registration. Now let's go to the application tab and inspect the cache. So in cache storage, we have a pre-cache v1, which has slash and the app.js. So we have these two resources or two files saved as a request and response. And if you go to the network tab, you see every request with a gear icon is being sent from the service worker. So we have the slash and the app.js being sent here. And now if we go offline, it doesn't really work because we just have those data in the cache, but we haven't instructed the service worker to use these two entries from the cache because they're available. And this is why we're gonna now listen to the fetch event. The fetch event fires whenever your main document, so in this case your index.html and app.js, requests any resource from the internet. 
And inside this fetch event, what we're going to respond with is going to be the following. We're going to open all of our caches and then check if we have a match for event.request, which means do we already have this document cached? Then if yes, it's going to resolve and give us a response. And then the response is going to be what we need. So then we return it. If not, then we're going to fetch event.request from the network, which means if we did not have the entry that we were looking for, we're going to fetch it from the network and return it to the page. And now you see when I reload the page, the local host, which is slash, and app.js are being served from the service worker, which means when I reload the page, the service worker is going to check if we have this request in the cache, which we do, then it serves it, and then we don't need the network, and this is why it works offline. But if you notice, we're not getting the list of attendees or list of users yet, and this is going to be discussed in about two videos. But for now, all we cared about was just to get the app shell to run even though we are offline. So that's how you write your first service worker code. I have to note something extremely important though. This is not the kind of service worker code that you're gonna write in production. This is only for learning purposes. That's because there are multiple pitfalls with this code that we've written. One of the pitfalls is that every time you add a new element to the cache with this current code, we have to remove everything and re-add them one by one, which is not optimal. Another problem is that every time you publish a new version of your own service worker code, you have to manually update the cache name. And another pitfall is that the only strategy that works here is called cache first, which is just get something from the cache if it's available. But for more advanced use cases, we have more advanced strategies. So this whole thing is just for you to learn the basic of writing service worker code. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use Workbox and how Workbox generates your optimized service worker code. Ciao!